Hey there viewers, uh, today this project is going to be a tent platform for campsite number one here. Um, for those of you following me, you probably saw my tiny cabin build video. Tiny cabin's actually just right up through these trees, not far at all. Probably hit it with a rock from here. Um, but this campground, I think, could use a little upgrade, so I wanted to build a, a a tent platform uh, back here in this area let me kind of show you okay so the you know here's what we got fire pitting sitting fire pit sitting area and then the uh, idea was this is a place to put your tent but it's not exactly but it's not exactly ideal there's uh there's some roots here it's kind of hard to tell on the video i'm sure but it's not what anything close to you know perfectly level it's uh even here it's you know it hasn't been raining very much lately it's almost june and this is still muddy back here so that's not great uh but i think what will be nice is to have you know a tent platform so for my version it's basically going to just be a small deck i'm going to do 10 by 12 which should be enough for even a pretty big tent or a small tent plus you know a place to kind of sit so um let's get started uh, i think the first step is going to be carrying all the wood and materials up here so i'll put the camera on high speed and i'll get started on that All right, whew, uh, it's a hot day out here. <laughs> uh, no easy task carrying all this stuff up here. So this is everything I need for, you know, the structure, the base. I still have a big pile of cedar decking down there to bring up, but let's start with this and I'll get to that other stuff later. Okay, so I think what I'm gonna do is, uh, so the fire pit's over here this will be 12 feet and then the front and the back 10 feet um, I think that's just gonna fit the best and then if somebody has kind of a small tent it can go sort of in the back and then it'll leave them this front space of kind of sitting area or place to put your shoes and stuff uh, also all, all my cedar decking is 10 feet, so I was hoping to be able to use that without cutting any of it, and which means that it's going to go, you know, this way, which I think is going to be better than having them all, all the ends facing. I don't know, that's a minor thing. I've got six cement blocks. I'm going to use one in each corner, and then one on either in the middle of both 12 foot, the long, longest 12 foot boards. And then I'll have a bunch of joists, 10 foot joists in between. So I'll start by uh, kind of trying to place my four corners and get it square and level. So let's do that. Okay, uh, I've got the general layout here. Um, surprisingly came in pretty close to level, just as it is. I only had to make slight adjustments on height, which is good. Um, I'm kind of amazed. Usually I find myself digging a big hole somewhere to get this to sort of work out, but you know, just as it is, it's, it's pretty darn close. Good enough for a tent platform anyway. Um, and I just had to make a, a couple of slight adjustments to get it square. And yeah, that was pretty easy. I'll measure out where the joist hangers go. Then we can hang the joists and throw on the decking. And this thing's going to be done pretty quick, I think. Okay, folks, not so fast here. Uh, <laughs> I just realized that 
I may have made a uh, disastrous miscalculation on my mental picture of this thing. So, uh, what I've got here is 12 feet on these sides and 10 feet across. And all my joists are 10 feet, because hey, the 10 foot two by sixes are cheaper than the 12 foot ones, even though you need a couple more. Uh, also, my decking is 10 foot, so that means <laughs> That my joists and my deck are running the same direction. I ain't gonna work. Uh, so I've got two options. Go back to the store, get 12 foot joists so that my 10 foot decking runs across it. Uh, or I run my decking this way, but that means I'll have to make some cuts. Um, I might have enough pieces, other scrap, to make this work. So let's see. A 10 foot one is going to be two feet short. So I can cut a 10 foot one into five two foot pieces. So that could work. I shouldn't have like any odd you know, pieces of scrap that I can't use. So that's kind of a bummer. It means I'll have to do a bunch of cuts. Um, <laughs> but that might be better than buying another six or seven 12 foot two by sixes. Uh, shoot. Well, okay, we'll do that. Slight change of plans on the decking, but I think it can work. Okay. Uh, I recovered here a little bit, so I had to basically adjust everything because I had it set that the 10 foot boards on the ends were kind of on the outside and the 12 foot boards were slotted in such that the 10 foot um, decking would stretch the whole way. But now that the decking's going the other way and I need it to be exactly 12 feet that way and not 12 feet three inches, I had to slot, slide each block so that now the 12 foot boards are on the outside and the 10 foots will all go down the middle. And I added the middle joist with its blocks kind of supporting those 12 footers on the ends. So, okay, we're back to uh, on track here. Fasteners, need fasteners and joist hangers. That's next. Okay, so here's what I figured out without getting this too crazy complicated um, so I set a mark at two feet from that edge for the for the, the cut section of decking to sit on so I have to have that then I but 24 inches is really too big of a span for uh, this decking so I'm putting one I so I just split that space in half and I put one here at one foot so those are actually pretty close but that's okay uh, so those will be 12 inches apart. Then I had my remainder space here, which is a little less than four feet, turns out. And then I just divided that up for my other two beams to go here, which ended up being about 15 inches apart. So they're not going to be exactly spaced, but that's okay. Uh, they'll be close enough that it'll all feel solid. And as long as I match up my marks you know, the distance of these marks on the other side so that they're straight, it should be fine. Um, so that's all great. The only problem is that with this whole change of route that I've done, I'm now short one two by six. I thought I had enough for four in each section, but I only have enough for three in each section with one left over. So I need one more board. Okay, uh, had a little delay there. I realized I had uh, bought the wrong size of hangers, so I had to run back to the hardware store, get new hangers, and I got the uh, board I'm missing. So now I've got four for each space, right? I better. Yes, four for each space. I got everything marked. So 
I'm going to start hanging my hangers and putting up the joists. So first I like to squeeze these closed because they tend to be all spread open like that. And then I'll hold it up under here. I'm sure there's better ways to do this, but it's working for me. Pound that down flush. I'm looking at my center line. Uh, these little tabs don't seem to be good for much, but they do kind of hold them in place while you're getting the first screw started. So I'll pound those in. Okay, uh, so that's it for the joists. Um, it's looking pretty good so far, I think. Uh, it's going a lot faster now that I actually have all the materials here. Um, so the next part uh, is gonna be putting out all the decking. So this, this will take a while. Um, but I have Let's see, I believe, I have to calculate here real quick, but I think I had originally budgeted for 36 of these 10 foot ones going 12 feet. Now that I'm doing 12 foot ones going 10 feet, I think I need 30. And then those extra six, I need to cut into two foot sections for all the little ends which I think works out just perfectly, but I do need to take some measurements here. So let's see how this is going to look. All right, so my idea as I was standing in the hardware store for this decking um, is, well, so if you, if you happen to have watched my tiny cabin video, uh, I did a little deck around the edge of that. And um, for the spacing on that one, you know, it was only about four boards wide. Um, and so for spacing, I think I just used a pencil or something um, as I went along. But for a space this big, if I just space as I go along, I'm liable to get off of straight. By the time I get to the other end, it's going to be at an angle. I mean, it's almost inevitable that there's going to be some variation as you go along if you're just putting spacers. So for something like that's this big, I want to measure out and mark where each board is going to go. Um, so these decking pieces are about three and a half inches. Um, so in my, as I was standing in the hardware store, I was thinking, well, I'll just do a, you know, half inch gap. And then that means each board is taking up four inches. And then it's super easy to do the math, three boards per foot, etc. It's also going to be easy to measure out if I do a quarter of an inch. For example, it's going to be three and a quarter, and then the next one's going to be six and a half, and it's going to be a little bit more complicated to measure out the whole thing possible, but also it's going to use more wood. So let me just try and measure out a few boards here at four inch spacing, and we'll see what it looks like. So, you know, we're going to have. 
a 4, an 8, a 12, for example. And I have a couple pieces here, so let's see how this is going to work. First one, uh, this is I'm already screwed up here. You know what? I'm already screwed up. Let's see. I need to start. I need to have my first board here. Okay, the first board's going to be on the edge, like so. Now, let me try this again. Four, eight. 12. Okay, these are no good. Now, this one will line up to this spot. And the next one will line up to this spot. And it'll be something like that. It's a pretty big gap. I mean, hmm. I gotta tell you, I'm conflicted because I really love the four inch spacing because it's so easy and I have the right amount of wood for it. Um, but a little narrower of a gap would be nice, I think. I don't know, maybe not. It's a tent platform. Maybe you do want a narrower gap. You know, by the time I do that, I mean, that looks a little better to me. Um, yeah, that's more like a, that's more like a quarter of an inch gap. Well, probably end up being two more boards. But maybe I'll go with that. I, I, I'm thinking a big old gap is not going to be great. So, yeah. I'll figure out a way to measure this. Maybe what I'll do... Maybe I'll measure it out on one of these 10-foot boards, and I'll put all the marks. And then I can just take that board down and mark it, and then transfer the marks to each one of these. That's what I'll do. Okay, so I'm going to take this board here. And I'm going to measure out three and three quarters inches spacing all the way along. Uh, I don't know if I can do this without making any mistakes. <laughs> uh, maybe I better use my calculator. I don't want to. I don't want to screw it up. Okay, well interestingly, the last mark was right at 10 feet. Uh, so, that's good. So, let me count these. Thirty-two. So, just as I thought, uh, it's gonna take two extra boards. Maybe an extra trip to the hardware store, or maybe I've got a couple. I don't know. Then they look kind of weird, but eh. I guess we can start with what we got. So, I'm now gonna take this board and I'm gonna transfer the marks onto each one of these joists so that I can lay them out right across. Actually, the first thing I'm going to do is uh, screw down my end board so that I have uh, something to measure from. Okay, I got my end piece screwed down. And I just started this, but let me show you what I'm doing. Um, so, I got my marking piece here. And I'm just going along marking where these are and you can see this first one just a little bit in from my previous mark the next one's in a little more the next one you know now we're down to a half inch or so um so anyway i'm just going to continue along here oh actually you know what i'm gonna do before i mark this whole thing out let's kind of look and see how this looks uh, 
So now we're going to be on the inside line here. Yeah, I think that looks better. Um, I mean, if anything, it's still a little too big. It's definitely not too small of a gap. So I think we're going to be good here. So let's go with that. I'll just continue marking these all out. Okay, so I got these all marked out. Uh, while I was marking them, I was thinking that I bought 36 of the decking boards and my plan was I would need 30 across here and that would leave me six that I could cut into two inch uh, pieces for the 30 two inch end pieces that I was going to need, or two foot rather, end pieces that I would need. Um, but since I closed that gap a little bit, I now need 32 boards and 32 two foot sections. So um, I need more boards. And in order to avoid having to go all the way back to the hardware store, I have lots of um, scrap pieces of this. Maybe I can muster up 32 two inch pieces. I wouldn't even need 32 because I got, I'll have four of these still left to cut. So I think I can use scrap pieces. They're not going to match perfectly, unfortunately, because, uh, the stuff, most of the stuff is brand new. And I think my scrap pieces came from some other project. It's been out in the weather a little bit, but whatever, it's all going to match pretty soon. I also might be short on screws, so I might have to go back to the hardware store anyway, but for now, Let's uh, go back down to the house and cut a bunch of two-foot sections. All right, let's get started on this deck.
Well, coming along three and three quarters inches at a time, uh, but I'm getting there. Uh, I need to get some more boards brought up, um, take a little lunch break, and I'll get back to it. All right, had a little lunch, got the rest of the wood, let's finish this up. Okay, that took uh, a little bit of time, but the decking is all down. I think it looks good. Measurements must have worked out because it fit just perfect. Um, so one more thing I want to do before I start. I, I stain this is install some tie downs so the idea is that somebody can put a tent on this um, so it's nice to have some anchor points uh, I had a couple of things here that I ordered from the old Amazon uh, one of them is these little D rings so I thought I'd put some of these kind of on the outside um, all the way around so that you know you could run a, a you know, line over and tie it onto this. And um, then I was also going to, well, I, so I, I was reading a little bit about these tent platforms and people seem to like these things. So these are little anchors that you can slip in there wherever you want and then tie on like that and hopefully not drop it down in there. Um, so I think these might be nice. Uh, I just need to think of how a way that I can have these available for people up here without them just getting lost. Uh, Maybe I need a, maybe I can attach a little pouch or a box or something to the side. So I'll think about that. But in the meantime, I got a bunch of these, so I'll just screw these on. That may be helpful. some kind of sealant stain down on this wood so that it'll last a little longer uh, here in the Northwest rains all winter um, especially up here in the woods you know it just drips constantly so uh, this woods not gonna last too long without something so hopefully this will help I, I, I picked up this stuff from the hardware store this is a Cabot Australian timber oil natural uh, not a sponsor we will see how this stuff does. Uh, the gal at the store said this is the best. So we'll see about that. Um, I'm gonna be having my, uh, my farm helper help me with this part. So he's going to start applying this uh, while I finish up a couple of these D-rings and then I'm gonna jump in there and help him. Okay, that's pretty much it for this one. Um, for now, I just need to take some pictures and update my hip camp listing, and I think this will be ready. So, thanks for watching. See you on the next one.